All right, good day, hi, and welcome. All right, so some of the projects I'm going to have going on in this boat is probably going to be forever before this boat goes back in the water. But when it goes back in the water, it's going to be gleaming and shiny and all that nice stuff. Um, I want to redo all the, the decks and stuff. But just to show you here, like, look at my... See, that's kind of moving. So that means there's water probably going to get back in there. But I'm going to probably take this off and replace it. I'd like to replace with, like that because that nothing ever goes wrong with that <laughs> uh, but what is nice too um, so I'm gonna be doing the uh, obviously my companion way wood and the railings they're not rotted so that's one good thing about them they're still pretty strong but it won't won't take long for that to rot so I want to detach all that and fix it up revarnish it put it back on uh, I am a fan of, of wood, but I also like stainless as well, because stainless, you, you, you put it on and you might shine it up once every 15 years and you're good to go. I'm not a fan of chrome because chrome, uh, you can see like, uh, it, it's not too bad on this one, but, uh, it gets a little bit flaky after a while. And then, uh, some areas you see, you got some built up here, but the, most of this stuff is stainless, so I don't have to worry about it. You can polish it out, which is really nice. As soon as you got steel or chrome or something like that, uh, that's one nice thing about this boat is uh, even if it's not the fastest of boats out there, uh, the materials that went into it are pretty darn good. Lots of stainless, lots of uh, aluminium. Obviously, the fiberglass is nice and thick. It's a pretty stiff boat. Not the stiffest of boats, but it's a pretty stiff boat. Um, but the wood bits, yeah, they're, they're all going to require some work at some point. And I'm just uh, really getting the boat really cleaned up. That's that's the first thing I'm doing right now is just kind of... It's tedious work, but and there's a lot of little bits to get in. Uh, but I'm going to go through... Like you see, I got a leak here and I got a leak here. Good here, good here. I'll show that again. You can see there's water build up. So that means there's water in here, so I'm going to have to get that out of there. Uh, so my deck doesn't get bad. But this railing's good. This railing's good. Uh, got a bit of a leak here. Um, bit of a leak here. Not bad considering that's 10 years that it... It's just starting to leak. So, <laughs> like for me, it's like this boat is in great condition. That's... However, I do have one major leak spot in here on the... On the uh, right here, I got to replace this. This is going to be a job and a half because there's a bit of rot in there. I can feel it right up to about there. So this has to come out. Uh, and that's right where my chain plate is. My other chain plate's not bad. It's pretty good. But you can see there was a bit of a leakage there. But structurally, it's good. You can see over here, it's actually there's no leak here at all. Uh, and there's really nothing up here that's leaking. So this boat, again, if you can find a boat in this condition for the price I found it for, I got, I bought the boat for 10.5. Now some people will say it's a Hughes. You paid 10.5 for a Hughes 26. You buy a Hughes and it's yours. Uh, there is some truth to that. Uh, they're not a highly sought after boat uh, by a lot of people, but the people that are looking after them or looking for them, they're looking for them. And they're looking for them because they're a good cruising boat. I mean... That's nine feet from there to there. Okay, I am five nine, and this is about six feet. Okay, <laughs> this boat is a very comfortable boat. Uh, the quality of the boat, uh, they come in so many different fits and finishes. This was the Hughes 26E. There's also the Hughes 26, the North Star 26, which is like the Cadillac version. But the Hughes 26 was a, a finish it yourself kind of boat. Uh, the 26E is kind of like this. So the, the Hughes gave you a lot of options for these boats uh, for several different types of budgets. But the big one is to, to get... What I did the first year when I got this boat was got the Burnhams, Leakums, and Sinkums, as, as the uh, marine uh, surveyors would tell me. I'm always looking for the Burnhams, Leakums, and Sinkums. And that's the stuff you want to take on uh, stay on top of and the, the first way to do it and this is going to sound funny before you pick any major projects in your boat clean your boat uh it's hard to clean a boat it really is it's tedious work it's repetitive work and you got to do it often so i'm fortunate that i can work on this boat any day i want because it's sitting in my yard so i don't have to worry about uh making the time to get here it's just you know do i feel like walking across 
you know, the yard, you know, it's 200 feet from the house. So it's, it's, <laughs> if I'm not working on it, it's on me, not on anything else. Uh, but there's other things that the, the boat is starting to show its age too. I mean, it's, like I say, it's the best used 26 I found under 20 or $15,000. Um, but it's starting to show things like uh, this here, like uh, all the stuff I'm going to be going over. Uh, you can see it more there, this little webbing and cracking. You see some of it there. Uh, that's not really major, major problems. But you can use this stuff called Crack Be Gone. But if you don't get ahead of it, it does become a bit of a problem over time. And with boats particularly still from the 70s, like for example this here, I'd like to replace this whole panel. I don't know what I would do with it, but... Uh, Still don't know what that does yet. I don't know what that does. Maybe I shouldn't play with them. But it's so fun though. I think these are my blowers, I think. <laughs> a, uh, believe it or not, that's a, a Hughes, uh, oh wow, look at how chalky that one is. Yuck. Uh, that's a Hughes, uh, uh, what do you call it, Billage. Uh, if your boat's flooding, you pull this out and you leave it out so when it's flooding, the water comes out of there and into the cockpit and goes out the cockpit drains. Uh, yeah, ew, ew, that's gross. But anyway, I've got a lot of little stuff like that. So I want to remove all the hardware eventually and just clean up. I would lo what I'd love to do, remove all the hardware, get a, get a small sandblaster, do the entire deck, make it bright and white, and then immediately apply a new uh, top coat. Uh, not paint. I don't want to use paint. I love because the problem with paint is you could have something majorly happening under and not know it. You won't be able to see it. And I don't want that. I want to make sure that I can always monitor the health of the boat. So that's why I know a lot of people when they go to sell off a boat, they'll paint the deck to make it look more new. But I like the idea too that uh, if you take care of it well, it, you know, it, it'll look good anyway. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that's some of the projects. So the railings are going to be the wood stuff is going to get done first because it's been neglected for <laughs> too long. Um, other little things that I want to do, more just make it pretty up. Uh, go around the windows again um, with the caulking. Get some marine silicone. Maybe take the windows right out and clean them up. Put in new gas. Like the, there's there's marine silicone, which almost all the older sailors tell me don't use silicone. Uh, get the right stuff. The right stuff. It's kind of a rubber stuff, and you can see some of it here. It's it's a sealant. It is a in a silicone form, and it and it, it really does do the job well. Um, I'm not going to take off the deck binding because I don't know, or deck rail, or whatever you want to call this thing, uh, <laughs> because I think that would be just a recipe for disaster. Uh, each one of these screws are. Um, fiberglass on the bottom on the inside of the boat so you'd be getting into major major work doing that and i would not want to have a, a split especially when the boat's sitting on the crate well wouldn't matter if it was in the crate or on the water i would not want to see the deck split anywhere so it's not leaking there but what you can do with these is okay you can use a bead of silicone on each side uh, this stuff does dry out again this stuff is about 40 years old uh, repainting the, the the trunk locker that wouldn't hurt. Whatever color it was underneath, that bluish color, I wouldn't mind seeing that. It just kind of give you a bit of an eyepiece. I want to take that uh, and clean it up a bit. Uh, it was painted black and then I don't know what happened to it over the years. It looks like somebody tried to scrape off the, the the whatever coating was on there. Maybe it was just getting too hot. I don't know. Uh, these things get roasting hot sitting in the sun. Um, the railings, I would lo love eventually someday to get railings that I can take down. These are older style railings and you can see they're welding on here so they don't remove so when you want to store the boat in the winter these things are always stuck on it so if you could take it off you could just drape a uh, if you could take your uh, removable railings if you could take those off it's really nice in the winter time up here in Canada or even if you're down south if you're going to be leaving the boat for any length of time you just throw a tarp over it and you, you know nothing's going to rip through uh, so yeah, cleaning the around the windows. These windows are pretty good. They don't leak. I think there's just the the main one there that ha gets uh, which I sealed up again with silicone at one point. There was a little bit of a leak on it. Uh, yeah, you can see where I ran a bead here, just to keep it out. You can see where I did around the, the, the all the all the screws. So that's pretty much the projects I want to do to it. Uh, other little things like this here, 
you know, get that all taken care of. There's a few places on this boat as, as remarkable as uh, Hughes were for building good boats, um, you know, quality wise. Uh, some of their boats were cheap though. Uh, they did skimp out near the end of their, the uh, Hughes, um, near the end of their, um, you know, uh, being open and stuff like that. Yeah, they did start to cut a lot of corners and that's at the worst time when you're, when you're, Porsche did something interesting. They were losing money. They weren't selling cars and stuff like that because they tried to make cars that were more affordable to the average guy. The problem was they were still out of the price range of the, the average, average guy. Average guy. And I can't remember which Boxster it was, but they said, no, let's charge an extra 50000 or something like that for it. And it worked. Why? Because it became exclusive to own one of these things. So then it pandered to the money. And when you do that, that's when, like, Swiss watches, uh, for example, uh, uh, Swiss Mage watch, okay, it's $11,000, but is it any better than the $3? Does it tell time any better than the $3 watch you get at Walmart? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, but the exclusivity is what people buy. Now, when it comes to boats, it's kind of the same. Geno, Beneteau, uh, uh, big boats like that, even the upper-end C&Cs, the, uh, uh, what you call it, the uh, Halberg Rassies, uh, uh, they, they, they make oysters, uh, they, they make like boats that are really, really expensive. Uh, most people cannot afford those, but it panders to the money. That's why you don't see a, a big market in the, the 30 foot and under anymore. It used to be everybody was buying 26 to 30, 22, 26, uh, and 30 foot boats, uh, because they were economical to build. Now you have to charge so much for a 26 foot boat I mean, this is basically going to cost you nearly a hundred thousand dollars for a twenty-six foot boat, but for an extra, uh, say, fifty, hundred and fifty, hundred and thirty to hundred fifty grand, you can get a thirty-five footer or a forty footer. Uh, you know, budget-wise, uh, hunter boats build cheaper stuff. Uh, there are, there are. Don't get, don't get me wrong. There are, you know, twenty-six footers and stuff like that. But it's just the market's not like it used to be, like back in the seventies and eighties and stuff like that, where the market was flooded with, uh, you know. 22 to 30 foot boats were the most popular. They're still the most popular to buy, but they're getting old. Now, that said, a boat like this, if you were to put four grand into a boat like this smartly, it would be good for the next 25, 30, 40 years. If you neglected it for another 10, uh, it would be a scrap heap. <laughs> uh, but just to give you an idea, this boat is still pretty good condition. I've taken fairly good care of it, but there's things like this, like I say, you get on top of all this little stuff, fix all that up, all little project stuff, nothing major, uh, but it goes a long way in the long run. But the biggest thing I want to do is ba basically, as soon as I get a little extra cash, I got some supplies that I've been saving up and uh, before I was supposed to get this stuff done like two years ago, but uh, some of the supplies... I got for, you know, fix up like, uh, you know, the uh, crack be gone stuff. And I'll show you that as I do it. Uh, I got that stuff, but the first, my first priority is getting all the osmosis out of the deck, which is going to take me a little bit more time than I thought. Wire brush isn't necessarily the answer. Um, I don't have a, a proper buffer for anti-skid. Per, I pretty much have to do it all by hand. I could do the hull. I ha, I've got a buffer for the hull, so that's easy to do. So what I'm just doing now is doing regular maintenance on it, cleaning things up, seeing what i got to do, make a list of everything I want to do to it, and then from there I will decide what projects are of utmost importance. And I will pretty much sum it up for any boat. I don't care how much you paid for it or whatever. The most important projects in no particular order, are burnums, leakums, and sinkums. Whatever's going to make the boat rot out, whatever's going to make uh, the boat uh, structurally fail, or burn, or leak, or sink. Uh, burnums, leakums, and sinkums. Take care of that, then work on the cosmetic stuff after. Um, I mean, these railings are relatively cheap, rather than having to replace the deck, because to replace a deck on a boat this old, this will be bulldozer food if, 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 if you have to do that. Um, this boat doesn't need that, and it's a long way from being that bad. So with a little bit more TLC, this boat could almost look like the day it came off the line. So, you know, like I say, I bought, I, I had, there was other boats uh, for like five grand, six grand, the same type of boat, Hughes 26. I was specifically looking for a Hughes 26, and I was very happy with this boat as a cruising boat for sure. Um, 
as a race boat, no, it's it's a little bit too slow. But uh, it's, well, it's not that. 4.2 to 4.5 knots is average cruise speed and 15 knots of wind. You'll peak at 5.5. You might touch 6 knots once in a while. Uh, but mostly 4.2 to 5. It needs a bit of heavy wind to go, but it's a well-built boat. When everybody else is sitting in at the dock going, oh, it's too windy uh, out there, I'm like, oh, finally, 30 knots of wind. I can finally do something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? 50 knots, it makes the boat move. Uh, 25 knots, the boat's fun. And 30 knots, oh, you're comfortable. You're still comfortable. Uh, above 30 knots though, uh, of wind, uh, yeah, you're definitely going to refin sail and stuff like that. But you, you've got, heck, there's enough freeboard on this. You don't even have to put up the sails. Just something to stabilize you a bit. <laughs> still sail. But anyway, yeah, th that's kind of what I got going on this. So I'm going to wrap it up on that. And I'll, uh, yeah, there we go. Talk to you guys later.